Hello and welcome to the very special edition of Truckee Talks. On Tuesday, November 4th, the voters of Truckee will be asked to decide on Measure M. This ballot initiative proposes to change some of the land, land use planning for Pro PC2, which is an area located near Prosser Estates. On the first segment of the show, we will be talking with proponents of Measure M. Later, we'll be dealing with opponents of Measure M and finally going to a roundtable discussion. This show will be a full hour and we ask that you stay tuned for the whole thing and thank you for joining us. To start off the show, we have proponents of Measure M and with me are Stephanie Olivieri. Hi. Welcome, Stephanie. Stephanie is the president of Mountain Area Preservation Foundation. Steve Frisch who is a local business owner and also a member of the Mountain Area Preservation Foundation. And finally, Dr. Karen Sessler. Dr. Sessler, welcome. And thank you all for joining us. Steve, let's start with you. Let's get a little background. How did Measure M come to be? What is it about? If you can give that to us in a nutshell. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to, to present our views. Um, this is a very important community issue, and we've been working on it for a long time. And it's nice to be able to get the information out to the public. Um, Measure M really came about at the end of a, of a three-year general plan process. Throughout the general plan process, um, the Mountain Area Preservation Foundation and many members of the public were concerned about the land use allocations that were granted to PC2. Um, specifically, they were concerned about wildlife habitat in the area and also about the 175,000 square feet of commercial space that was allocated to that area. Um, near the end of the process, after negotiations, discussion, and, and substantial input, it was determined that, that probably the best way to bring this issue to the public would be through a ballot initiative so that the people could make a decision directly on the land use on this parcel. Were you active during the general plan process? The Mountain Area Preservation Foundation and many other citizens in town were active throughout the entire general plan process and, and had input, discussions with the town, um, did economic analysis of the general plan, had independent land use planners look at the planning and look at, at the process, and by and large felt that it was a good general plan, with the small exception of this parcel. Okay. Are the members of MAPF unanimous in their support of Measure M? Uh, I believe that they are. Okay. I believe they are. All right. And Stephanie, can you give us a little more specific on what Measure M proposes to do that's different from where uh, the general plan has proceeded? Where, uh, would you say, say that again? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're looking for just some of the specifics of Measure M, how, how Measure M proposes to change some of the land use planning for the PC2 For PC2. Um, basically, uh, it allows the uh, 600 homes that are uh, allowed under the general plan, but it changes the, uh, the commercial uses considerably from 175,000 square feet to 25,000 square feet. It allows no hotel and no golf course. It allows for uh, public uses, the school, the firehouse, the parks, and um, uh, allows for a large amount of open space. Okay. It actually, uh, as a matter of fact, increases the amount of land that's uh, available for open space and increases the amount of land that's available for, um, for, for the 600 homes. Okay. Now, when we talk about um, the process that got you to the ballot initiative, prior to actually obtaining signatures and going forward with a ballot, did you work with the town or did you work with Hopkins Trust people to try to change that prior to going to an initiative? We did. We worked with the town and we worked repre with representatives of Hopkins. And um, it was an interesting process. We met several times with uh, Tony Lashbrook and uh, Steve Wright uh, in an attempt to um, uh, make, uh, work with concessions. And uh, we did make some concessions on technicalities in the uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. When we met with the Hopkins representatives, we um, really weren't too successful. And that was when we deemed that it was time to go on to uh, the initiative process. We went out, gathered our signatures, and uh, gathered 2,400 signatures in a very short period of time. Those signatures uh, allowed us to put this initiative on the ballot, and um, we believe that that indicates that the people of this community, 2,400 of them, wanted this issue to be voted on. Now, there's um some significant debate uh, among the citizenry of Truckee as to exactly how Measure M will change things and won't change things. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you hope to accomplish with Measure M, both short-term and long-term. 
a lot of things that we attempt to accomplish. The first thing is by bringing this vote to the people. We are allowing the people of Truckee to decide what they want to see in the future. The second thing that it will accomplish is it will preserve and protect the open space in our community. The beautiful natural mountain vistas, the meadows, the things that we make this a unique and, and special community. And the last thing that it will accomplish is it will stop supermarket sprawl on that freeway interchange there. And what that will allow for the future is that will allow us to take the first step that first step towards turning the vision that was outlined in our general plan and turning that into reality. The vision of a community that is pedestrian oriented, a, a community that has a cohesive commercial core where there are sidewalks and parks linking community um, services, a, a community that encourages growth but yet still supports the small town character, the history, and the natural beauty of Truckee. So you wouldn't call this an anti-growth measure then? No, not certainly not. Certainly not. No. Um, there are a number of areas in the community where we can look at substantial commercial growth. Um, there's growth available at the mill site. There's growth available at PC1. There are hundreds of thousands of square feet of, of space available for commercial growth along Diner Pass Road. This was never an issue of growth or no growth. This is an issue of land use, and it's an issue of what the appropriate land use for PC2 is. The, the issue really comes down to whether or not development at PC2 will inhibit growth in other areas of the community where we feel a substantial number of members of the community feel it would be more appropriate. One of the things that the general plan sought to do is create infill, which is to say fill in the, the blanks within the town limits and then try to avoid the sprawl. Sprawl is a word we've heard a lot during this mm -hmm. campaign on both sides of the issue. And if we take a look at the map itself, and specifically, I have to point out there are a few errors on this map downtown, first of all, being on the wrong side of uh, <laughs> Highway 80. But the, specifically what we're looking at is this area here, which is... Uh, on the northeast corner of the intersection of highways 80 and 89. It's a very large parcel. And what specifically were your concerns with that parcel? There are other parcels indicated, uh, such as PC1, which is Coldstream, or PC3, which is Tykert, that you're not addressing at this time. What was it about PC2 that made you call to action? Part of the major concern was that the, um, the development would seem to lend itself to commercially oriented uh, or to freeway oriented commercial development. Um, all, of the, all, of the proponent, all of the proposed plans that we've seen to date um, show the freeway concentrated at the Highway 89, 267, and Hi Interstate 80 intersection. And I think that that's a substantial issue for this community. This is a gateway parcel to the community. It is the piece of land that tells people what we are. And it, I think it's important, and I think a lot of people in the community feel, that this parcel should represent a, a positive, forward-looking town. And we really don't want the town to, to look like Auburn. And if you drive up and down the freeway on a regular basis, which I do, and you look at what has happened to the major freeway intersections in California, it's rather obvious that we live here for a reason. We live here because we choose not to live in communities that, that allow sprawling commercial development. Doesn't the general plan specifically address highway development, though? I, in the general plan, isn't it already limited to the intersections of Highway 89 South and 80 and also the Donner Lake Interchange? That is one of the guiding principles in the general plan. Um, I think that's 5.4. I'm not positive. Um, I've been through this document several times. That seems to be one of the apparent inconsistencies in the general plan. By and large, we feel this is a wonderful document. But if you are going to place freeway, if you're going to place commercial at a freeway, it becomes freeway commercial. There's almost no way to stop that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's pretty obvious that the town planning department wanted to place commercial development at the existing commercial freeway exits. That would be the Dino Lake exit and the 89 South Interstate 80 exit. And I think it's a, a, a substantial problem that, that really has not been addressed properly. Well, let's talk about some of the perceptions, if you will, going into the community and talking to folks. 
Um, one of the perceptions will be, if Measure M passes, that we will have overcrowding on our roads, specifically but not necessarily Donner Pass Road and also uh, Highway 89, if the housing development element is allowed to go through, but the infrastructure items or the commercial is not. And again, how do you address that perception? Why don't you take the traffic one, Steve? Well, I, I've read the traffic study rather extensively and that's kind of an interesting question because there's been a lot of information back and forth about what the traffic impacts would be. The general plan's traffic study shows that with development at PC2 that we will be 23,000 trips per day on the 89 North Corridor. That's, a, that's an increase from 5,400 trips per day today. The general plan traffic study also shows three traffic signals, three intersections at on the 89 North Corridor that would require traffic signals. Now, I think that a lot of the town's traffic problems are going to be solved when the Highway 267 bypass comes in. Mm -hmm. That project is slated for completion by the year 2000. That will probably take about anywhere from 12 to 15,000 cars per day out of the downtown core, out of the mm -hmm. corridor area of our town. And really the argument that not developing PC2 will lead to increased traffic in the Donner Pass Road area, it, there is no fact to substantiate that. As a matter of fact, th there is a lot of fact to, to argue quite the opposite. So. Okay. Now let's talk about infrastructure. Schools, firehouses, uh, those are things which have been proposed and it's important to say at this point too that there is no formal plan before the planning commission right now. We're not talking about the plans of PC2 but rather land use Correct. as being the issue on, on the ballot. But that being the case there has been talk from the developers that they plan on putting in the school and plan on putting in the firehouse and a lot of people again in town are concerned if that is not allowed to go through. That is, that is not correct. Um, Maya, the truth is that uh, the developer is not um, going to be putting in the school and the firehouse. The land use designation on this property is the issue. The issue is that land, um, the, the land will be designated for schools, firehouses, parks, and churches. The land use designation does not change, un change under Measure M, and there's no um, there is no uh, basis for saying that the developer is going to build the school or build the parks or build the firehouse. He has not said that he would do that. At least to our knowledge, he hasn't indicated that. Uh, well, and, and in fact, I'd have to go back and double check that. I was at a town council meeting where I thought the developer, in fact, did stand up and say that that was their intent. No, what they're saying, Maya, is that they will make land available for churches. They will make land available for schools. They will make land available for parks and firehouses. Okay. And yeah, our yeah. initiative does not change so that. So an item to be clarified yeah. further on in the discussion. And that's also a requirement in the general plan as it stands anyway. They and, would and need Measure to make M does that not land available that. anyway and Measure M in no way modifies that. Measure M would allow the building of schools, parks, fire station as they were necessary. Okay. The other part of your question, Maya, that I think is important to answer is that um, the question is to uh, building 600 homes but not providing any services for those mm -hmm. homes. Uh, the fact is that the general plan allows for over two and a half million square feet of additional commercial over the next 20 years in areas other than PC2. So we have a, m a major surplus of other areas where uh, services can be developed for this community, this new homes in this community. Mm -hmm. The mill site, again, PC3, PC1, the Tykert area by Donnergate Chevron, and certainly all along Donner Pass Road, which we're encouraging uh, development in those infill areas because they tie our community together. They tie the commercial together rather than placing it at the freeway where it becomes a sprawling uh, regional shopping center. Okay, and then briefly, because we'll need to wrap up this segment, the last question that's been on the minds of some of the people is, the general plan took a long time to develop. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of man hours. And how do you respond to the issue of let's honor the process. Let's see if the general plan process as it stands now will in fact work. My, we honor the process and all of us respect the huge amount of time and energy that was devoted to this plan. But you know there's a saying in medicine that goes the operation was a success however the patient died. <laughs> we believe that the land use designation on PC2 will be harmful to our community. 
and that Measure M will allow us to, to surgically remove that part of the plan which is not healthy for Truckee. And that will leave us with a general plan that can evolve so that Truckee will be a healthy, vibrant community, economically and environmentally healthy. Okay. Steve, Dr. Sessler, Stephanie, thank you for joining us. We'll thank be you, seeing Maya. at least one of you on the roundtable discussion. We will be back with representatives on the opposing side of Measure M. Please stay tuned. Welcome to the Tree Fox Bakery, where the first thing you'll notice is the smell of something fresh in the oven. Family owned, the Tree Fox Bakery specializes in everything delicious. Breads, pies, donuts, pastries, cookies, cakes, and more. It's made fresh every day. From scratch, no prepackaged doughs or additives. Just the great taste of home-style baking. You can't get this quality in a chain store. Stop in for a latte or cappuccino. We've got those, too. Open early every day. The Tree Box Bakery, Donner Pass Road, next to the 7-Eleven. Welcome back to Trekkie Talks. We're talking about Measure M, and in this segment, we have representatives from the Hopkins Trust, owners of the land in question on Measure M initiative. With me today are Dale Creighton from Sylvester Engineering. Hi, Dale. Dale, wick, welcome. And Brian Mullins, who is a representative from the Hopkins Trust. Hello. Dale, or Brian, welcome. Thank you. Okay, for both of you, we just have a few minutes to answer a number of questions, but the first one would be, how are you involved uh, with the development of PC2, and when did you get involved with the development of PC2? How long has this been going on? Well, the, uh, the, the formal planning process began back in about 1990. Uh, when the County of Nevada was undertaking its general plan update. We joined the Eastern Nevada County Steering Committee um, and worked at that for about three years when the town incorporated. And we basically started over again uh, with the town council and staff to do its general plan, which of course it's mandated to do under state law. Uh, that's the formal planning. Uh, before that, we <coughs> Um, we did some planning at the, um, at the level of an exchange with the United States Forest Service. <coughs> that began in 1974 and was concluded in 1984. Uh, we uh, conveyed out 11,000 acres of land in the vicinity of Boca and Stampede Reservoirs, which were owned by the Union Ice Company, which the Hopkins family owned back uh, uh, in the eight, late 1800s and early 1900s. And, um, uh, we acquired from the Forest Service about 2,200 acres, which is now known as PC2. Um, that was a form of planning unrelated to the type of planning that you do in a general plan, but for us involved a significant negotiation with the government, both federal, state, and um, local uh, agencies, which was also tested by an environmental impact report and concluded after 10 years of negotiation. So that to us was significant planning. That's when it really began for us. And did you stay involved in the general plan process as the town of Truckee, once it incorporated, then undertook its own general plan? Right. We, uh, you could basically say we've been planned through the, pla been through the planning process twice. First at the uh, county level for three years, beginning in 1990, with the Eastern Nevada County Steering Committee. And then with incorporation, we began to work with the town. Dale, if Measure M passes, how will that impact the development that uh, Hopkins has planned out there? Um, it could have a significant impact on uh, um, the um, goals of Truckee, long-term goals as identified in the general plan. Uh, when we first, uh, the town of, uh, first incorporated, uh, I'm a professional land use planner and uh, was involved in uh, the, the um, uh, basic fundamentals of the general plan as Truckee was first started. One of the, the components that was Truckee was looking at is to make this a sustainable place where there was a balance between employment, jobs, and opportunities for people that lived here without having to purchase all your goods and services out of the area that, it, that erodes the tax base. So one of the, uh, one of the uh, components that we were uh, uh, faced with was, and we agreed to, was to live with the general plan process however it came out with. So our basically uh, objectives was to uh, stay with the planning process to keep informed uh, what was going on and to create a sustainable uh, development that would provide a balance of uh, enhancing Truckee's economy, economic, uh, providing employment opportunities, environmental opportunities, public opportunities, and, and all those components. It's basically, as the symbol goes now, it's kind of the four-legged chair. And, uh, and uh, taking away a component of that chair has a significant effect on being able to implement the other goals. Okay. 
a question that's come up uh, among the citizens of Truckee is with the Highway 267 interchange and, and the way that that has now been changed by Caltrans, it seems that a portion of that interchange will run through the Hopkins land. Uh, that being the case, one of the things in the general plan is that there shall be no highway-oriented commercial development. How do you plan to address that? Um, that's correct. The general plan says that uh, in the policies for PC2 that there will not be highway-oriented commercial development. That means that any development plan that's brought forward cannot be oriented towards the highway. Mm -hmm. So service stations, fast food restaurants, uh, uh, large freestanding signs, those kinds of components are things that we cannot do in that development. Along with that, there are scenic corridor setbacks in the plan. Currently, there's a 300-foot setback zoned on Highway 89 for any development to occur. In and above that, there's a 1,200-foot setback uh, for a scenic quarter which requires uh, specific design criteria when any development plan is proposed. So as we understand the rules of the game, if we come forward with a development project, when, which we have not yet, then we have to not, we cannot have a highway-oriented facility. Okay. Now we talk about uh, some of the infrastructure items. And I know this has come up in town council meetings and there has been some debate. The general plan, uh, it calls for uh, specific infrastructure items to have lot land allotted to them, school, firehouse. Well, is that part of the development that you have planned for PC2? Yes, it is. And are you working with the special districts to make sure that those items are, in fact, incorporated into PC2? Yes, we are. And we've done that even prior to the uh, Truckee Incorporation. When we first uh, acquired the property with the land exchange from the Forest Service, the, the t um, basically the 12,000 acre exchange in the mountain areas for the 2,000 acres of property in town, um, we proceeded with a tentative map on the property, which we dedicated sites to make the PUD, the Public Utilities District, for water and power, uh, dedicated sites for those. We've been in contact with the school district, provide land for a school site and possibly a college site, and we have also uh, represented that we will donate land for a fire station site. Okay. I might, I might point out that, that um, where the, the school and park site is concerned, we've offered to donate uh, that land. Uh, there's a certain portion of the property uh, south of Alder Drive consisting of about 45 acres and um, it's that piece that we've offered to the somewhere in uh, this area the, to the left side of the screen oh, okay. right there okay. right there that's a 45 acre site that we've offered to the um, the school district uh, to uh, we've offered to donate it to the school district and to the park they have a, a plan to merge the two facilities and achieve some economies and then in addition to that, uh, just east of that location, abutting Highway 89 North, we've offered to donate uh, a site approximately five acres in size to the, um, to the uh, uh, fire district. And then uh, we've offered to donate um, a connector road from Tahoe Donner to Highway 89 North as well. So uh, those donation offers are in place. And Actually, uh, Vince Devaney of the school district has very kindly offered to name the, uh, the school the Hopkins Middle School if, if everything goes along to plan, which we're just delighted about. Now, are those donations above and beyond what the general plan would require for development anyway, then? Or? The general plan does not require us to donate any land. The general plan says that uh, within your planned community, there shall be land available for public. Now, that land could be sold to public entities, uh, okay. but it does not require donation. We have indicated we were donating the donating land. Donating the land. Okay, thank you. That clarifies a question that's been outstanding. Um, we don't have very much time left. Uh, we will be asking you to come back for the roundtable discussion. I'd like to thank you both for being here. Just quickly, if you can, how do you address the perception of runaway growth, big box development, uh, overdone commercial square footage? What is, what is your... <laughs> In a in a thumbnail response to that. Well, let me, let me just address that. You know, th this is there have been a number of myths that uh, have been floated since the initiative was uh, started a few months ago, and I'd like to debunk some of those myths. Uh, if we, you can do it briefly. We are are not never have been proposing a mall for our property. Uh, we've been called a Meadowwood Mall. There is no mall proposed for our property. There has never been and is not under consideration a big box on our property. 
when Walmart came to me about three years ago and asked if we were interested, I went to Dale and uh, other of our consultants up here, and I said, what do you think? And the, uh, the, and the unanimous response was political death if you go along with a big box in this town. So we have always uh, been adverse to the concept of a big box. Okay. And then um, um, just lastly, uh, the scale of our project uh, is, uh, this is very much similar to the Safeway Center in Gateway. Uh, that's approximately the size. In addition to a, a community-based uh, shopping center, uh, there are two small office buildings proposed that um, add up to 175,000 square feet. So that's, that's a thumbnail. Okay, thanks, and I appreciate that. Thank you both for being on the show, and we'll look forward to seeing you back at the roundtable. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back in just a minute. Hello, I'm Ed Hirona, Farmers Insurance, and I have some very exciting news. Farmers Insurance and Citibank have teamed up and are now offering auto loans on new and used vehicles. Get pre-approved before you shop, usually in just four hours, and our rates are extremely competitive. You've come to know us for auto, home, life, business, and health insurance with great customer service. Find out how easy it is. Farmers Auto Financing. Call 587-1563 for more information. Farmers, we're here to serve you. Hi, we're back talking about Measure M, and on this segment we have representatives from CARE, or the Community Alliance for Responsible Environment and Economy for Truckee. I had to cheat and look at my notes for that, but I got through it. With me are Steve Carpenter, Sam Lemon, and Bob Tamietti. Gentlemen, welcome. And Thank you. It's nice well, to have you here. Thank you for Thank having you. us here. Um, Bob, let's start with you. First of all, how did CARE get 